When I think back on all of the cosmological questions I've received over the years, one of the most common is, where did the Big Bang occur? The answer to that question is truly mind-bending and surprising, and I think an excellent topic for today's video. When people hear about the Big Bang, what they usually take away from it is that the universe was once packed into a volume of zero size and then the universe exploded. That's what I call the firecracker model of the Big Bang, and sadly, as common as it is, it's quite wrong. We're pretty sure of this because of very solid astronomical observations. If the firecracker model were right, then when we looked toward the location of the hypothetical Big Bang, we'd see galaxies moving away from us. But if we looked in the opposite direction, we'd see that these other galaxies would be moving away faster than the first set. That's because objects far away from the firecracker have to be moving faster. That's how they got far away. So we'd be moving faster than objects closer to the starting point, and objects farther away would be moving faster than us. But we don't see any of that. Instead, when we look out into the universe, we see the galaxies moving away from us pretty uniformly, no matter the direction. Galaxies farther away from us move faster than closer ones, but direction doesn't matter. This observation means one of two things. Either the Earth is located at the spot where the Big Bang occurred, or there's another explanation. And it's the second explanation that we think is true. So what is it? First, we have to distinguish between the visible universe and the entire universe. The visible universe is basically just a sphere centered on the Earth. The radius of the sphere is determined by the speed of light and the age of the universe. Light travels at a fixed speed, so that speed times the age of the universe should tell us the radius of that sphere. Since the age of the universe is about 14 billion years, we'd expect the radius to be 14 billion light years. It actually turns out that the visible universe has a radius of 46 billion light years. That's bigger than we expect given the speed of light in the age of the universe, but the universe is expanding and that explains the discrepancy. I made an entire video on this point, and I put a link to it in the description. We also know that the entire universe is much bigger than that. By studying light created shortly after the Big Bang, astronomers have determined that the radius of the entire universe is at least 500 times bigger than the part we can see. And if we think about volume and not radius, the entire universe is a minimum of 125 million times bigger than what astronomers can study. 125 million, and that's a minimum. It could be much bigger. Mathematicians will tell you that 125 million isn't the same as infinity, and they're right. But science is a series of approximations, and we can simplify the discussion if we just treat the entire universe as infinite. That's not necessary, but properly dealing with large, finite sizes just complicates the explanation. So, infinite it is. Now, we know that the visible universe is expanding. After all, distant galaxies are moving away from us. So we can run the clock backward and shrink both the visible and entire universe to smaller sizes. The visible universe contracts from its current majestic size of a 400 quadrillion quadrillion cubic light years down to atomic scales. The entire universe also shrank by an identical amount, but remember that the current entire universe can be thought of as being infinite in extent. Shrinking infinity by any fixed number, even by the huge amount the visible universe shrunk, doesn't change the infinity. Thus, current thinking is that before the Big Bang, the visible universe was shrunk to atomic sizes, but the entire universe was infinite even back then. Then, the Big Bang stretched all space, indeed it created space, turning that primordial subatomic speck into the majestic universe we see around us. That means you shouldn't think of the Big Bang as being like the explosion of a firecracker, but rather as the rapid expansion of existing space. So where does that leave us as far as knowing where the Big Bang began? Well, we can take this two-dimensional representation of the entire universe before the Big Bang with a speck that represents the early visible universe. 
We can then put axes centered on the visible universe. Because the universe is infinite, those axes run off to infinity, left and right, up and down. But we could have moved the origin of those axes somewhere different, even somewhere outside the visible universe, and those axes still run off to infinity. In short, because of the infinite size of the primordial universe, where you put your axes is entirely arbitrary. Any spot works, which means that every spot in the universe can be thought of as the center. And if you have a tendency to think highly of yourself, you're perfectly correct if you consider yourself to be the center of the universe. Congratulations. The fact that any spot in the universe can be thought of as the center gives us a new perspective on the cosmos. There is more to the story, of course, and I made a video that explores the topic a little more thoroughly. And as usual, I put a link in the description if you want to learn more. But I think that learning that you're completely correct to think that you're the center of the universe is enough for one day, don't you? Go out and treat yourself. <laughs>